one of the big battles that we talked about a lot before the tournament and during the first couple of rounds was Cleary v DCE. Uh, how do you feel about the result of that? And do you think they've chosen correctly? Well, Cleary won. I mean, we heard Meninga come out and say it today, didn't we? Um, you know, a bit late in the tournament to start doing that sort how of thing. How much do you but... trust Meninga? You know, <laughs> like, what if he flips back? <laughs> oh, you know, with, with his track record, I think we uh, can count on a lot of flipping. He didn't seem to flip a lot when, uh, you know, Queensland were winning series after series in State of Origin, but maybe that's because he had the best players in the world. And now he's a Kangaroos coach. He does have some of the best players in the world as well. I've never really seen Meninga be tested as a coach, but I think that's for a separate video. Um, I think Cleary is obviously the choice we have to go with, you know, back-to-back premiership winner. Um, he's really earned that spot, especially over the last two years. And um, yes, Cherry Evans is the incumbent, but how long ago was it that, you know, Australia played a test match before this? Was it 2019? The 1990s tournament was the last kind of test match type thing that I can remember. But yeah, Cleary's definitely got the, the nod there and I think he's definitely earned it. Yeah, look, I'm with you. Cleary's the best halfback in the game. Um, you could make case he's one of the best players in the game. We both agree on this, and that's kind of boring. So what I think we should do, and what we're going to start doing more on this channel, is Devil's Advocate. So first round of Devil's Advocate ever on The Casual Athlete. I'm going to flip a coin. One of us is going to argue for Cleary, the other one for DCE. You take your position and you suck it up. Miles, give me a head to tails. Mate, uh, I'm a cricket captain, so uh, tails never fails. Tails never fails? We've got tails, mate. So who do you want to take? Um, Just think about it for a second. You don't have to take Cleary. <laughs> you could take DCE. Um, you know, it's, it's always more fun to watch you struggle. So Cleary for me. <laughs> All right. Well, you've made your case. Uh, look, I prepared for both possible outcomes here. So I do have a number of reasons why DC is the best choice at halfback. Everything I've said before this point in previous videos was a lie. Uh, we, we are now in DC territory. All right, six reasons why DC is the best choice at halfback. Number one, DCE for Queensland has always clutched it up. He scored in the opener this year and he led the team to a win the decider with Dearden beside him. No Cameron Munster. Where was Cleary in that game? Number two, it a 100% win rate across eight appearances for Australia in the World Cup specifically. And he's been the vice captain for quite a while. Rule number three, he is a mastermind. He signed with the Titans, backflip, destroyed their future, and still managed to become a beloved Queensland captain. Number four, <laughs> he's played <laughs> 10 years of origin where he's never been the most explosive player on a team but he still played his role, which is exactly what he needs to do for, to for Australia. And in that vein, he's a better defender than Cleary as well. 427 tackles, 43 misses. So about 90% tackle rate versus Cleary, 277 and 46 misses. So probably about yeah, 80% sort of thing there. I've got to run the numbers there. Uh, number five, and the most important one here, DC is slightly taller than Cleary at 1.83 metres compared to 1.82. It's all, it's all <laughs> <laughs> he's about five inches in neck. <laughs> he's taller nonetheless and number six DC is more versatile he was chosen over Cleary for this game in the backup dummy half role which shows that he is the more versatile player these are the six reasons why Cleary's not as good as DC as a selection and on behalf of the worst ever Queensland team thank you very much I'm open to hearing your counters but if you want to concede you're welcome to uh no, I think I'll, I'll go uh, against a couple of those. Uh, you said uh, origin. You brought up origin. I think it's a very interesting point that you do bring up. When um, we speak about origin, um, DCE's played in 19 games of origin. Uh, and he's only won 10. So there's there's uh, nine more losses there that go against him. More than half? Is that... Yeah. With Cleary, as well, it's exactly the same. Won seven, lost six. So they both have a very similar record there. Um, the thing I like to measure it against is big games. So you're talking NRL finals and state of origin. For me, the finals are very important. And for DCE and Manly, seeing if he can you know, carry a team and, and be able to get a team over the line. Yes, he won one premiership, but he was quite young. 
uh, at the time. They had a great side, the 2011 Manly Seagulls. But in finals appearances, DCEs only won eight and lost 10, whereas Cleary has won 11 and lost five. So a lot of those coming in the last, you know, three to four years with Cleary and, you know, him stepping up in big games, you know, leading as a you know, relatively young 24-year-old, 25-year-old, what is he at this point in time? Uh, I'd say he's already, you know, surpassed DCE as a, as a competitor and as a, as a man, but maybe not in height. I can't argue with that. Uh, <laughs> okay, but we get to the game, right? Let's just run through a hypothetical. We line up against New Zealand. DC gets angry. Oh, no, sorry, Cleary. Cleary gets angry, just like he did against Parramatta. Uh, late in the season where he copped a five-week suspension for a shoulder charge. What if he gets sent off again? What if that hothead, you know, sets himself loose? And uh, I'm really trying to make myself believe this point. What if he gets himself <laughs> sent off yet again? DC doesn't do that. You know, Cleary, five-week suspension recently. Surely DC is the more stable option, the safer option. Yeah, you, you're talking about from a penalties standpoint, uh, giving away penalties. I look more with halves. I, I feel like I don't look at the the penalties that they're conceding. I look at the errors that they're making um, because they're your biggest decision maker. Um, and DCE, over the course of this year, made 25 errors to Cleary's 14. Um, it just shows that Cleary's a bit more... Um, he's a bit more... You know, he keeps the ball safe. He doesn't drop it. He picks his moments a bit better. Whereas I find in the last couple of years, especially while Trebojevic has been out, DC has just taken it on and, and said that, oh, you know, I'm the best player on this team aside from Tom Trebojevic. No, they're, it's a little bit different, you know, trying to do what Tom does and, and trying to do what DC does. He's a very different kind of player. He likes to control the game with his kicking game. And I think... Manly over the last couple of years haven't really had the forward pack to be able to stabilize his his game. Um, whereas it's completely different in Origin and the Kangaroos setup, right? Because they've got those classy players around him and be able to plug him in. I'm pre- maybe making a DC point for you. Um, plugging him in is uh, is not the worst option because he's always shown that once he has those good players around him, i.e., 2011. Manly Sea Eagles, multiple origin appearances. He does turn up and does play his role better. I would argue that he's almost the best role player in the league, but he can't be the star player. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel what you're saying, but that's yeah, exactly the point. So, look, I'm glad to have converted you to the DC camp um, in this hypothetical debate. My other question would be the hookers. So, Ben Hunt. And Harry Grant, who have they played with more? Ben Hunt and Harry Grant have played with DCE a lot more. I rest my case. Who's played with Isaiah Yo more? <laughs> uh, Isaiah is playing edge back row, and no one's played much with him there. So again, I don't like I don't like that option as well. Again, I find like, that why move yeah. Why move the guy who won the premiership at thirteen and was probably the best captain in the league this year? to a position that he played six years ago. Cam Murray like, has been very good in the edge too. But look, you can't... The problem is they're both such good locks. Like, Yeah, they, oh, they are. Yeah, like you're not going to get it wrong with either. And they can both play so well on the edge. I, I agree with you though. I would run uh, Murray on the edge and Yo at lock. But look, maybe they're just testing a few different options because Yo's played center before as well. Like maybe they're testing for you know, not carrying a center in the finals, mm-hmm. and whether Yo can sort of shift back to the edge or it could be anything with Meninga. You, you never really know. Um, let's let's go to predictions here for this game. So Australia v Lebanon, on paper, not much of an even game. I think Lebanon throws a bit at them attack-wise. Uh, Lebanon, like I said before, they were millimeters from equalizing a game with 27 minutes to go against New Zealand. Uh, early on so you know they're a team that can contend with Dewey and Moses and Karaz and you know a few of these other guys like Miski and Mansour on the edges are classic wingers like the forward pack's been good I think they'll trouble Australia here and there especially if Australia doesn't turn up fully ready to play 
my prediction would be I reckon Australia turn up and want to want to put it on them. Yeah, look, I, I think um, 58 12. 58 12. 58 12. Yeah. yeah. Dewey turned up during the week and absolutely torched uh, Jamaica, but the, the relatively how much that means, I'm not too sure. But um, with that came the confidence to say, you know what, we took it to New Zealand. Um, we can take it to Australia. New Zealand are the number one team in the world. Let's not forget that. Australia, while they haven't played as many games to possibly get to, to that ranking system and, and get an upgrade in that, um, they are a very classy side. But we saw with New Zealand the same kind of faults that I think Australia have, which could be overconfidence yeah. and uh, not uh, being battle-hardened, whereas this Lebanon side, you even saw it last week. Like even against Jamaica, they were they were picking a few fights. They are thoroughly up for the challenge. Like it's yeah. just um, it's just a matter of whether they can go with Australia, um, and really kind of find the groove that's going to unravel Australia if they can get in there and knock a few heads loose. Um, and their forward pack does a good job early in the game. I reckon for the first 10, 15 minutes, anything can happen. So. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be cheering for Lebanon a little bit. Um, I think they've got a great side. I, I love Dewey. I love Moses. Karaz, we talked about Karaz in one of our other videos. Um, I just think they're such an exciting side, and I would love to see them go through the semis. It'd be the furthest they've ever made it in, uh, in a World Cup, but um, I'd be down for that. You know, I'd 100%. say this has been a successful World Cup for Lebanon. Um, they were outsiders for some reason against Ireland. No disrespect to Ireland, but we had Lebanon marching over Ireland, and they did. They were up like 20 nil in that game. So, like, yeah, they, they've been disrespected coming into this tournament. They were always going to get through that pool, in my eyes. And then yep. to have to face New Zealand and then Australia, it's just a different league. But if they had games against, I don't know what pool. Fiji? Fiji is sort of the second in their pool, though. Like, I'm trying to think of a pool where they could have, if they swapped with PNG, for example, and were in Tonga's pool, or yep. they were going up against, I don't think they could do yeah. it against England, but I think they may yeah. have beaten Tonga. Like, just because the class and the halves is such a different sort of level. I think Lebanon, it, the right draw could have gotten through to the next round after this, but it's just tough. New Zealand, Australia. So what, what's your score prediction? Um, I don't think Australia cracked 50. Um, I'm going to go 42 to 12. I think that Lebanon crossed the line a few times. I just think their outside backs are way too classy. Um, got a great halves pairing. Almost as good as, I'd say, Australia's, really, um, if DCE was in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just think that Lebanon have got a little bit of class. They'll, they'll turn up and, and, and give it everything because they've got nothing to lose, whereas Australia kind of have everything to lose. Every time they play, they have everything to lose. All right, so 42-12, 58-12. We've got Lebanon scoring a couple of tries. Uh, fingers crossed they can put up a good show, put up a big fight. Anyway, we're going to be jumping on to England v PNG next, so join us in the recommended video for that one.